Welcome to the County Commissioner's Corner Show. Uh, I'm your host, Scott Varnco, County Manager, and I'm joined by Elizabeth Lawrence and Josh Blanchard, uh, two of your three county commissioners. Unfortunately, we have another commissioner that's been under the weather, so she's not able to join us today. Uh, I'm going to start off um, with uh, just uh, some lighthearted news. Um, we had uh, the Summit Foundation Golf Tournament, yes. uh, Breck Grand Vacations Golf Tournament uh, yesterday. That was June the... I don't know what day it was, 12th? 12th. 12th. Yeah. June 12th. Uh, and uh, Summit County Government's team is the defending champion yes, of that event. true story. Uh, we tried really hard to defend our title. We ended up in a first place tie in our flight, uh, but we lost in a playoff and didn't make it to the shootout yeah. round. Uh, but uh, Elizabeth and I are, are two members of that team, Wendy Van Antwerp uh, from our uh, Health and Human Services Child Welfare office and Craig Phillips from our county assessor are the other two members of our team. So we're very proud to, uh, they can't take away the no. title that we won last no. year. So the 2021. There. So we're very excited that about that. Uh, but great to event. even make it back into a playoff yes. the second yes. year. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we are people that don't play golf very yes. much because yeah. we're usually at the courthouse or yeah. at a meeting. Yeah. So We did not play very well. No. Didn't make a putt over eight feet no. the entire day. <laughs> no. Or we would have crushed the flight yes. had we been able to do that. So True. anyway, it was a great time and a great event. And so we always like to be able to support And that raised one. a lot of money for yep. the Summit Foundation, yep. which yep. then... Puts a lot of money out to other nonprofits. Absolutely. So good yep. stuff. Yep. So good Way stuff. to represent Summit County. Thank you, Jim. We trust. Thank you. Yep. We and there's always 2023. Best. Always. That's right. Absolutely. And we yeah. did get kudos multiple times during the banquet the evening before as the defending champs. And yes. So uh, along with some harassment, but uh, <laughs> generally just kudos. So we were excited about that. And here we are, right back to work early the next morning. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yes. Here we are. All right. So, Josh, we're going to start off. Uh, uh, we're going to talk about master planning. Uh, we've got a couple of efforts underway. The first one, Open Space and Trails Master Plan. You want to talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. So as we have experienced in Summit County over the last two years, we know that our open space and trails have been some of the most visited uh, outdoor recreation areas, not only in Colorado, but in the United States. So over the last year, we've actually been undergoing an open space and trails reassessment um, and sort of strategic look at our open space and trails master plan for the next 10 years. Um, folks may not realize how broad our open space and trails um, uh, department is. We manage, Summit County Government has 100 trailheads, 38 miles of paved rec path. Um, we have 100 miles of trails and 50 miles of dirt road. And so that's a lot of miles that uh, services not only Summit County, but all of our visitors as well. So we are undergoing this 10-year master uh, strategic plan uh, for our open space and trails. Um, and like I said, it's been going on since last year. We launched the project. We've done a lot of community outreach. There is a draft of our proposed master plan on our website on the Open Space and Trails page, and we are definitely inviting community feedback. Um, folks have until June 26th to take a look at that and provide feedback to Summit County Government and to our Open Space and Trails Department. And if you see this before, this week, which is June 16th, there is a community uh, meeting that's taking place at the Community and Senior Center on Thursday, June 16th from 4 to 7 p.m. Bring the kids if you're coming in after work. Um, there's going to be some, some light snacks, um, and um, there will be Spanish translation as well. And so please, you know, come be a part of the discussion. Learn more about the master plan for open space and trails. Provide some feedback. Uh, we really want this to, to be representative and a really good plan for the entire community. We're looking at things like access and equity, um, diversity of the programs, of course, looking at preservation and conservation as a as a goal as well. So lots of great things, and we want everyone to be involved in that in that uh, process. Great, great. Um, and along those lines, again, we've got uh, that as the plan around our open space and trails. There's a second planning effort that's taking place that's called what we call the comprehensive master plan. And so, Elizabeth, you want to talk a little bit about that one? Sure. And also in, in conjunction, our open space master plan, Town of Breck is finishing theirs mm -hmm. up too. And we work in concert with them Very all the time. Um, so it was really great. I think that it was time to do this, and we're excited. It's also time to do our comprehensive mm -hmm. master plan, which was it, when was it last done? 99? 
Uh, more recently than that, oh. but still um, a long time ago. Okay. So I'll do for an update. I think it's about yep. 20 years. Yep. So it's been a long time. And so since that was done, so what our comprehensive master plan update will include is also all of our basin master mm -hmm. plans. So here in the Summit County government world, we divide up into basins, which is the 10 mile, which is Frisco Copper area, Snake River, Keystone, Dillon, that area. Um, Dillon Valley is included in Snake River. River, the lower blue, Silverthorn, and then the upper blue, which is basically Farmer's Corner to Hoosier Pass. And so those are our basins, as well as we have countywide planning. And so we need to update all those sub-basin plans and then, or sorry, basin plans. There's these even sub-basins within there, and then our countywide. So this is a huge project. We expect this is probably an 18 month to two year timeline. So it's going to take a while. Um, we hope it kicks off um, maybe early August. Mm -hmm. Around there is when we're hoping um, we'll get that going. So we'll involve a ton of public input there, outreach to the community, lots of open houses, multiple languages. Um, it's also going to be what we want the future of Summit County to be. That's a big question, but it, we can't do this without public input. So we're excited to get started on that. Yep. So there'll be um, opportunities up front to try and help guide some of the work that's being done by our staff and our consultants. <laughs> And then a lot of check-ins over the course yeah. of the next uh, you know, 18 to 24 months yeah. because it is a big project. And again, it has a lot of ramifications on uh, how we address growth, how we address transportation, how we address it. We'll build in some yep. of the open space yeah. and land use yeah. uh, housing in it as well. Yep. Yeah, commercial yep. development, yep. I mean, all sorts yep. of things. But I think we're putting two new lenses on it this mm -hmm. time. Um, and we've been doing this in terms of open space as well. Everything we're doing, we need to look at this with an equity lens mm -hmm. as well as a um, environmental or climate change lens. Yep, both. Exactly. And that will also be involved um, not only in our open space master plan, which we know people can learn about this week and provide comment over the next few weeks but we're really going to see this in our comprehensive plan you know how do we best utilize our resources here in summit county when it comes to climate change and we are in a very fortunate position but that's not going to stay that way if we do not plan it and plan around it um, and so that's going to take a lot of expertise in there yep. and i don't think we can understate the importance of community engagement for this mm -hmm. as you mentioned it's been De at time. least a decade, if not two decades, since yeah. we've really looked at this, and Summit County has changed so much yeah. with land use, congestion, development, um, climate, environment, right. all of these issues that we're looking at. So this document really provides sort of the blueprint as we right. move forward in Summit County. Right, and people are really starting to talk about overcrowding. Now Absolutely. the question is, are we overcrowded? Or is it just we have year-round visitation now mm -hmm. and that makes it feel different? Yeah. That's the stuff we also need to address in there. You know, how many people can we truly hold in Summit County? What's our comfortable carrying capacity? And then how does that translate out into our basins so that they reflect the true character of Summit County? And we can't lose that in this yeah. process. Yeah, absolutely. So stay tuned. We'll, of course, use this uh, as one venue to share information about timing and mm -hmm. about uh, opportunity to, to comment publicly. And so uh, just stay tuned for that. Uh, all right, Josh, we're gonna move to another, um, uh, Elizabeth mentioned housing a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, carrying capacity, et cetera. Um, Short-term rentals is another big topic, has been a big topic within Summit County for the last um, a few years. And uh, the Board of County Commissioners took uh, some more action here recently with regards to STRs. Absolutely, so um, in terms of housing and land use and how we sort of navigate the changes in Summit County, uh, back on May 24th, um, we did issue a up to nine month pause or nine month moratorium that went into effect immediately. And this is for new short term applications, short term rental applications. So anyone who currently has a short term rental that is in good standing um, that uh, is in unincorporated Summit County can continue to apply for um, that renewal. That renewal period is in August and September, so this moratorium went into effect prior to that. Um, there is an exemption clause, so for folks who um, are under contract for a new sale, um, there's, there's a language in the moratorium that allows for special exemption, I believe up until 30 days. 30 days so yep. we're still in the middle of that special exemption period in early June, but that would um, expire around June 23rd-ish or so. Um, so certainly if you have questions, you can um, you know, reach out to Summit County government 
Um, you can get all of the information. The moratorium itself is uh, ordinance is listed on our website. Um, but again, this really goes back to how we think about um, our neighborhood zones. This is just in neighborhood zones, not in our resort overlay zones, but just in neighborhood zones, and how we think about this growth and development um, in more of our traditional working neighborhoods here in Summit County. Yep. Yep. Uh, and we know that, um, again, during the period of time that the moratorium's in place, we're going to be looking at talking with you guys about what other uh, regulatory changes might make sense. And so this gives staff, it gives the board, it gives the community some time to provide their feedback and their thoughts without seeing uh, sort of a continued um, explosion of short-term rentals within the neighborhood zone, which was one of the... I think key factors that you guys saw as we right. um, discussed the right. moratorium was sort of a flipping of uh, in the past the uh, about two thirds of all the short term rental license applications were coming from the resort zone mm -hmm. and about a third from the neighborhood zone and then it almost completely flipped to 60% were coming from the neighborhood zone and 40% yeah. were coming from the resort zone. So that was troubling and concerning um, for you guys and so I think that was a big factor in the consideration and will obviously be a big part of the discussion going forward of how do you um, help to manage some of those neighborhood areas like you said Josh and th that's exactly right and across the West uh, communities are looking at um, absolutely what this looks like. I think that's a really yeah. great point I yeah. mean we just heard recently very rural counties very rural in Colorado counties. are also looking at this mm -hmm. it's not just resort areas mm -hmm. but now that um, rural areas are also turning into vacation spots. Yep. And um, I, I think this is a big conversation yep. across the U.S. Yep. for sure, but certainly in Colorado. Yep. Yep. Good. Um, all right, we will jump to our final topic of the day. Uh, Elizabeth, we wanted to talk, uh, as you mentioned, yes. and your allergies are, are <laughs> firing up from the as smoke I'm sniffing away, yes. Uh, let's talk a little bit about wildfire and uh, maybe what the season has in store for sure. us and what folks can do. Yes, yeah, so currently as of today, which is June 13th, we are not under restriction. Um, saying all that, we always have uh, rules and regulations here in Summit County uh, with backyard fire permits through mm -hmm. our um, local fire departments, through either red, white, and blue and Summit Fire and EMS and as such um, are here in Summit County. The sheriff is our wildfire warden. He starts to get busy this time of year mm -hmm. where we will get weekly updates from him as he is part of what's called the Upper Colorado River Basin Area Wildfire Area. And um, they meet weekly. We'll get reports weekly to determine if we need to go into wildfire restrictions. It's complicated to go in wildfire restrictions because here in Summit County, County, we are surrounded by national forests or integrated with so much national forest and um, that's confusing national forest does it a little bit differently than maybe we want to and so uh, we have good plans agreements with our municipalities when we move into this and it's really about working closely with the Forest Service um, there is smoke as you can hear and see um, I am someone that's quite allergic to smoke and it seems to get worse every year yeah. Earlier. I think that's it, it earlier. Mm -hmm. Yes, but 20 years ago when I lived here, we yeah. didn't have wildfire smoke that I ever dealt with. Mm -hmm. You know, that was rare. Yeah. And now it seems to be more and more prevalent. Mm -hmm. So, um, with that, there's wildfires apparently in Arizona. Mm -hmm. Also, saw another map that showed air quality coming from New Mexico. Yep. Looks like there might be a small wildfire in Colorado, I saw, mm -hmm. um, maybe towards the Glenwood area, mm -hmm. potentially, you know, trying to get some more info about that. Uh, so what we're saying is this is the time of year to stay tuned in to your resources mm -hmm. on your phone. If you've not signed up for SC Alert, do that. Mm -hmm. It's really imperative. You can go to our website, summitcountyco.gov. We'll link that on the bottom here and uh, remind people sign up for SC Alert, especially as we get new folks moving here all the time. Maybe people change their cell phone, something you just want to check in on that um, because that's one of our best tools that we use to let people know um, if we're in wildfire danger restrictions. Of course, we'll have the VMS boards out, et cetera, et cetera. You'll see lots going on, um, but there's lots of websites as well. Um, and we'll try to get some of those linked in the comments maybe um, on here when we post it on our uh, Facebook page that tells people some other places to look but um, 
tis the season, June 13th. Season, and, yep. you know, last year we were in anomaly where we were pretty much the last wildfire of the mm -hmm. season, mm -hmm. um, September 27th, when the Ptarmigan fire started. Yep. Um, so, of course, we're praying for moisture, praying for rain, yep. but also it really requires uh, folks to be diligent and smart when they're out recreating and um, all around us is precious and we really have to make sure that um, not only our visitors but also our locals are really doing what they can to make sure that we're um, not accidentally starting a wildfire. Yep. Well, yeah, so big changes over the last several years. As Elizabeth said, um, years and years ago, our, really our fire season within Summit County was September and October. It's still September and October, but now we're getting fires in June and July that we really never saw historically. Um, and so people have to be very diligent. People have to be um, prepared as well. They have to have yeah. you know, their uh, evacuation plan set yes. up with their families. Yeah. They have to have um, what sort of immediate things do they want to take from their home if they have the opportunity to get to their home yeah. before an evacuation notice. So do all of that planning and preparedness work. There's a lot of information on the county's website yeah. about that, uh, as well as on the fire district, local fire district's web pages. So check that stuff out, create a sort of fire box for yeah. yourselves to, to take as a family. Think about your pets, think about what you're gonna do, right. how are you gonna meet up with your family if you happen to not be in the same place when an evacuation order comes right. through. So think through all of those things uh, early on, now is the time. Yep. And we're just a couple weeks into the chipping program. Mm -hmm. I'd be yes. remiss if we didn't talk about yep. that. Yes. Very popular, yep. um, our Summit County chipping program where uh, counties across the state have copied it or have it yep. as well. And so look at that schedule on our website. Mm -hmm. um, it is tight this year, the schedule, but yep. remember you can put out uh, um, approved um, limbs and yep. slash and debris, mm -hmm. et cetera, um, related to really help um, clear that up in your neighborhood. Yep. Great. Yep. Right. Josh, anything to add? Well said. All right. Stay safe. I yes, think that's stay it. safe. Yep. Thanks awesome. very much uh, for joining us, and uh, stay tuned on this channel for lots of other good government, local government programming.